Good evening. Good evening. As always, we want to acknowledge to our Father and our God in heaven that we are grateful for all of his love, mercy, and blessings. Uh, we don't always understand why God does what he does or why God allows what he allows, but we do know God. Uh, we know that God is ever loving. God is ever just, he is ever faithful. Thus, in the absence of knowing God's purposes or counsels, we can still find comfort in his person. Uh, the psalmist has declared in Psalm 97 verse one, the Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of owls be glad thereof. Uh, there's reason to rejoice that God reigns. Uh, I may not understand what he's doing. He hasn't checked with me uh, for my thoughts on the matter. Uh, but I know that God knows all, that God is capable of doing all, uh, and that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And so I'm just glad that God is God, uh, glad that he condescends to deal with us. And for all of God's blessings, we ought to be eternally grateful. We want to direct your attention this evening to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the text that was read into our hearing. Uh, we want to read again there verse number 3. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 3. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. Based on the words here recorded by Solomon, we want to use this evening as a subject, madness of the mind. And as we consider the text that we have before us here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, Solomon says that there is one event unto all. Now, all you have to do is read the rest of verse 3, and he tells you what that one event is. Uh, but I believe we are all aware of the fact that God decreed in Eden that we come from the dust, and to the dust we shall return. And if it were just a matter of returning to the dust, then maybe there would not be reason for concern but the Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews 9, 27, that it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. When we look at Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 9 tonight, but, but the, the book in general, I submit to you that the counsel of Solomon will bless every life, and the life of a young person in particular. Now, now, why do I say the life of a young person? When you can learn certain lessons early in life, it will spare you from having the consequences and the baggage of, uh, of mistakes and of error that many have to live with through the duration of their stay here uh, on this earth. When we look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and Solomon says uh, again in verse 3 that the hearts of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live. Uh, uh, appreciate that the heart and the mind uh, are the same thing. You remember back in Proverbs chapter 23 uh, verses 6 and 7 that Solomon said, eat, not thou, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Now I'm sure we are all aware of the fact that you think with the gray matter between your ears, as opposed to the blood pump uh, in your chest. The human body, as designed by God, is a marvelous wonder. 
but the body is controlled by the mind. Again, in Proverbs, Proverbs 4, in verse number 23, Solomon says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So when we look at the counsel of Solomon here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and it talks about the heart of the sons of men being full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live. Madness in the text is not anger, but craziness. Do you remember that Festus said to Paul, uh, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. Now he didn't mean Paul was angry. What he was saying is, Paul, you are crazy. Because the things that Paul was saying sounded strange to him. Well, a crazy person is a danger to self and to others. It is ironic that doctors have diagnosed schizophrenia, ADD, ADHD, bipolar disorder, and other mental ailments, but they have never given attention to the malady of the text. Now appreciate in the context of Ecclesiastes, under the sun is Solomon's way of saying life without God. And the one that endeavors to live life without God is indeed mad. The world of Noah's day was mad. In Genesis 6 verse 5 we read, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Well, those people were mad. Uh, uh, when everything that you think of, I mean, you just spend your time uh, 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 how to do something evil, that's madness. And our world is growing madder all the time. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 13, Paul declares, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, if you pay any kind of attention to the news headlines, uh, our world is going madder uh, uh, by the minute. Uh, uh, morality is, is just going down the twos. Well, that's a sign of madness. It, it, when you start legalizing things that God says are illegal, that's madness. We live in a world that has gone mad and appreciate the blessing of being forewarned at an early stage of life. You know, it, it's good to know that I live in a world that's mad so that you don't go mad with the world. The one who lives with madness of the mind will experience heaviness, uh, the heaviness of the consequences. See, madness of the mind leads to certain things. Uh, again, in, in verse three, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, Yea, also the hearts of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. The heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. See, madness of the mind leads to obsession. Now, by definition, obsession is a persistent, disturbing preoccupation with an often unreasonable idea or feeling. It's just something about growing older that you can look back and see the obsessions in your, in your, in your living in your earlier years. Uh, many times parents are trying to warn their children, don't be obsessed with things that you are obsessed with. Uh, you know how it is when, when your kid comes home and they think they found their first love. And you know, the person has no interest in the gospel. Uh, he won't hold down a steady job. Uh, uh, you, you couldn't tell that she has any aspirations to be uh, a woman of God. And you just try to warn your children, that's not the person you want to spend the rest of your living with. But see, obsession will tell you, don't listen to sound counsel. You know what you want, pursue it. In layman's terms, an obsession is acting crazy and feeling like you can't help yourself. People often confuse being in love with an obsession. In, in Judges chapter 16, we, we read the account of Sam, Samson's betrayal by Delilah. Samson had some madness of the mind to be dallying with Delilah in the first place. 
See, Delilah wasn't where uh, Samson should have been looking uh, uh, for love interest. Uh, you know, we need to learn some things from the Old Testament. Didn't Paul say that the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning? Why are you looking among the pagan peoples for a love interest? Uh, you need to be looking among the children of God. We, we need to teach our young people, look, everybody might like romance, but, but when you look for a love interest, look among the people of God. Now, that's not to say that folk in the world aren't attractive and all that kind of thing. But, but understand what's really important. And as mad as we may think Samson was, because you remember, she asked him, tell me this, the, 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 the source of your strength. And Samson, you know, he made up a story and she tried it. And then she said, tell me the source of your strength. And he made up another story. And she tried that too. Now, now. I mean, Samson, we, we don't have to be rogue scholars to see this probably is not going to end up well for you. But see, when you obsess, you just throw reason to the wind and, and you do things that people in their right mind just look at and say, you must be out of your mind. Solomon was out of his mind. Uh, Samson was out of his mind. Well, Solomon, too, when he got all them foreign wives and they turned his heart from God. But 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 Samson in particular. Is one thing to see someone else's madness it takes a special brand of humility to see my own see when I desire to spend money that I don't have for things that I don't need I might be obsessed with material possessions well when I'm willing to do what the world does simply because the world is doing it and I want to be accepted by the world and kick God to the curb that's madness and when we have madness of the mind, we are obsessed. But not only are we obsessed, but we may also be possessed. See, when something takes you over and moves you to act against your better judgment, that's called possession. Now, in the Bible, we read about people that were possessed by unclean spirits. Uh, you remember the fellow that had the legion uh, of evil spirits in him and just had him acting uh, uh, in, in a very bizarre way. Well, well, you don't necessarily have to be possessed with unclean spirits to be possessed and act in a bizarre way. See, you can be possessed by your own beast. Now, now what's my own beast? A, a carnal mind. Some people are possessed by carnalness uh, of the mind. I want to do what the world does and, and, and be esteemed by the world as, as being one of them. Uh, in Romans 1, verse number 28, Paul declares, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See, sometimes folk are possessed, not, not by evil spirits, but by evil. I, I want to do what the world is doing. I want to have the fun that they're having. I want to be uh, 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 looked at them as, as being uh, 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 on board with their program. And not only can we be obsessed and possessed, but if we are mad, we will ultimately be oppressed. See, without God, our enemy becomes our super enemy. Now, now you know who our enemy is. And, 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Peter warns us, be sober, be vigilant, because your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Well, when you endeavor to live life without God, as Solomon says, life under the sun, the devil steps in and begins to oppress. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse number 4, Paul said, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now, let me tell you something. When the devil blinds your mind, you are being oppressed. See, oppressed is not always being tied down and whipped. He, he oppresses some. He blinds the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. It, it's almost as if Solomon was saying, let me whisper some sober words of wisdom to you. All things, verse 2 there in, in uh, Ecclesiastes 9, all things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. See, everybody's going to die and leave here. 
and everybody's going to stand before God at the judgment. There is one event to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not, as is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. Solomon said, remember, God is in control. And what God has said is going to happen. Everybody's going to leave this flesh and blood existence. And we know from the counsel of the Hebrew writer that everybody is going to stand before God uh, at the judgment. Then in uh, verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. See, you, you always got a chance to turn around while you're living. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Now, you know, I like lions. That's my favorite animal in the whole animal kingdom. I watch documentaries about lions. By contrast, I don't like dogs at all. I've been chased by too many of them in my younger days. But Solomon says, a living dog is better than a dead lion. While you're living, there's a chance. But once you die, it, 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 it's over. Verse 5, for the living know that they shall die. Now, now, we don't like to think about it. We don't want to acknowledge it. But the one thing we all know is we can't stay here forever. And the older you get, the more of a reality that becomes. But the dead know not anything. Now, now, if you understand what Solomon is saying, he's saying this, he's, he's comparing the two things. The living know that they are going to die. The dead are already dead. Now, he's not saying once you die, you cease to exist. We, we know this from what Jesus taught about the rich man and Lazarus. Remember, the, the, the rich man died and Lazarus died too. And, 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 and the rich man lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Now, he knew he was in torment. Uh, he knew he had five brothers that were headed down the same road that he had just traveled. So, so Solomon not saying you cease to exist as one religious group would affirm. He's saying comparatively speaking, yeah, the living know that they're going to die. The dead are dead. It, it, their life is over. Neither have they any more a reward for the memory of them is forgotten. And then notice he finishes verse 6 with that phrase. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. When you take God out of the equation, as Solomon says so many times in this letter, vanity of vanity, all is vanity. It's empty when you take God out of the equation. Whatever you may accomplish in this life, you are going to die and leave here. And you come in with nothing and you go out with nothing. And we, when we appear at the judgment, God is not concerned whether you were a Nobel Prize winner or whether you discovered something that, uh, you know, earned somebody millions of dollars when it was patented. What God wants to know is, were you obedient to my commands or did you reject the gospel of my son? That's the, that's the concern about life. If, if you take God out of the picture, life makes no sense. There's no purpose to live in if you take God out of the picture. But fortunately, God gives purpose to our living. God is willing to welcome anyone. And, and guess who we are? Anyone. We may not be serial killers or lifetime criminals or any of that, but we are anyone because all of us needed the cleansing blood of Christ Jesus. God is willing to extend that to anyone. He requires that we hear the gospel message, Romans 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That we believe Jesus to be the Christ, John 8, verse 24. That there be a willingness to turn from sin and to live after his will. Uh, that's called repentance, Acts 17, verses 30 and 31. That we make the confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, Matthew 10, verse 32. And then that we be baptized in water for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2, verse 38. When we submit to baptism because it is God's command... As a matter of grace and mercy, when we go down into the water, God washes away our sins by the blood of Christ Jesus, puts his spirit inside of us, 
and adds us to the church. And when we come up out of the waters of baptism, he declares that we walk worthy of being called uh, his children. Ephesians 4 verse 1. If you're listening to this message via one of the social media outlets and you want to be baptized into Christ Jesus, uh, then we bid you reach out to our elders at elders at laurelchurch.net. Uh, they will be glad to make provision for your baptism even tonight. You know, that's how they did it in the Bible. They baptized people the same hour. Uh, if you're here in this audience and this is your desire, then we bid you to come as we stand and as we sing the song of invitation. Hi, I'm Ricky Cook, minister here at the Laurel Church of Christ. We hope you've enjoyed our video broadcast and we'd love to have you with us in person as a special guest. Currently, we offer Bible classes for all ages on Sundays at 9.30 a.m., followed by our Sunday worship service at 10.30 a.m. Wednesday evenings, we have Bible class at 7 p.m. Please come and visit with our church family. We believe that you'll want to come back again. Have a question? Please reach out to our elders at elders at laurelchurch.net. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks and God bless.